right? So once we have the player name, we have the player score. Let's go ahead and print it. I just, I just want us to print out the, f the very first, um, l let's just go ahead and print it. We have the player name, player score. Let's go ahead and print a, a, a sentence and say, this player scored this number of points. So I'm going to say that player, uh, player name, okay? I'm going to concatenate it with, um, you know what, let's just pass it into, into the print function as separate arguments. Or another thing we can do is we can just concatenate them. Let's see. Um, okay, so let's just pass it into the print function as uh, separate arguments. All right, so I'm going to say player name scored. Then I'm going to say player score points. Right, so by default, when you pass in multiple arguments into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space separate in them. All right, so this is going to read as whatever is stored in player name, let's say Kakra. So Kakra space scored space, let's say if it's 45, it's going to be 45 space points. So we print that, and then once we print that, all right, so first of all, we read the, the player name, which is K, we check to see if that wasn't an empty string. If it wasn't an empty string, that means player name contains something, it contained K. It reads K and moves the position, the read position from the end of K to the beginning of this line. And we call it, all right? If, if, there's this, if, this, if, this, if this player name is not equal to an empty string, then let's, let's read the next line, which is going to be the score and store it here. Once we do that, we have the player name, we have the player score displayed and then what we do is we call golf.readLine again, and we know that that line is going to be a name, all right? Let's call golf file.readLine again. We know that's going to be a name, so we assign it to the variable player name, right? It's going to go file.readLine is going to uh, read in the next line, which is going to be a name. We are going to assign it to the variable player name. And then the while loop is going to start all over again. It's going to check to see if play, uh, player name is not equal to an empty string. If it's not e equal to an empty string, that means it was able to fetch or read a name. If it wasn't able to read a name, if, if it got to the end of the file or if there was nothing in the file, this while loop wouldn't run and then we're done. It will, it will finish displaying everything. Once we're able to find something, we display it. And then we try to read another name again to check to see if there's, it's just, there, there are more details in the file. If there are more details in the file, it will keep printing them. If not, if not, the while loop will exit and then we are done. So when we are done with the while loop, let's just um, close, okay, the goal file. Um, let, let's close it. So goal file dot close. When we are done with it, this is outside the loop. And then we're done, right? But let's test it out. Let's test it out um, because we're going to encounter some problems that I want you to see. So again, we have defined the main function, but we haven't really called it. So when we run the program, nothing will happen, right? Until we call the main function. So I'm going to call the main function this way and then run it and see if we have any errors. So run it. And we can see it's displaying something to us, but it's not displaying it in, in, in a good way. So we need to fix this. All right, so it's saying K scored 45 points. So we can see that it's trying to display this. We can see Kakra scored 67 points. It's trying to display this, but it's, it's, it's bad. It's, it's not displaying it well. All right, so anytime you read, okay, anytime you read a string this way, well, first of all, the reason, if, if you look into golfscores.py, every time that we print, we, wrote, we write, let's say, every time we wrote, let's say, play a name into the, file, we added a new line character to it. And the new line character is basically what is causing these, these uh, uh, pieces of information to be displayed line by line. We print, we write the plain name, we add the new line character, so it forces the position to be moved to the next line, and it displays the player score. And then we add a new line character, which causes whatever follows the, the number 45 to be displayed right after it here. So basically, the new line character we've attached over here is what's causing these values to be displayed on a new line, right? So every time we are also reading from the file, when we read, let's say, k, right? At the end of this k is really 
a new line character. We are reading k together with a new line character. When we when we first of all call go file the, the, the read line, when we call the read line method, it reads k and it's reading the, the name plus a new line character, right? So really player player name contains the k k with a new line character. The same with the player score. Player score also has a new line character at the end of it, and that's why whatever is following player player score is displayed on the next line. Okay, the new line character here is forcing whatever is, is following player score to be displayed on the next line. So over here we are displaying k and a new line character, and that's why when we display k, it forces whatever is fo following the, the name k to the next line. Right now, by default. Anytime you pass arguments into the print function, they are displayed with a space separate in them. And that's why we see this space here, all right? And then it, it displays the score. And also when we read the score, it has a new line character at the end of it. So it's displaying the score with a new line character. The new line character is forcing whatever is following the score to be displayed, to be displayed in the next line. And so the space is just from the print function trying to separate these arguments. So one thing we can do is we can strip okay the new line character at the end of the name and at the end of the score. So let's let's first of all start with the end of the, the name. When we call read line and we try to get the name and, st and store it in player name, we can strip okay the new line character on the right of this. We don't see it in this file, but it's it's there. It's like an invisible new line character that is causing whatever is following these values to be displayed on the next line, right? It's causing whatever is following k, for example, to be displayed on the next line, 4 to 5. It's causing whatever is following 4 to 5, for example, to be, to be displayed on the next line, okay? That's Kakra. So when we call read line over here, let's, first of all, it has a new line character attached to, to it, its rights that we can't see yet. It's just, it's just causing it to be displayed. It's just causing whatever is um, following these words or these names to be displayed on the next line. So we can strip it. We can strip whatever is on the right of um, these names. Okay, when we when we read them, we can strip whatever is on the right of them um, before we use them. So over here, we call go file the read line, which basically reads k plus the new line character, and we can strip what's on the right of that. So go file the read line. We re we read the k plus the new line character, and we strip. So dot r strip means we are stripping whatever is on the right of whatever we just read. And what are we stripping from the right? We are stripping a new line character, backslash n. So backslash n together is the new line character. That is what is attached to the right of the string when we call it, when we call go follow read line. So go follow read line dot r strip, strip the new line character on the right, okay, on the right, of whatever we read from the file here. And that's going to be our player name without the new line character. So now it's going to try to display the player name and there would, there's not going to be any new line character at the end of this to force whatever is this, uh, whatever is following the new line character. Sorry, there's not going to be a new line character at the end of this name to force whatever is following this name to be displayed on the next line, All right? So now we are done with, uh, with, with it over here. Over here also, we try to read read line again to get the player name, okay, to check. And so this is, this is the very first time the program runs. In the while loop, we have to read the name every time to check to see if, you know, there's another name you know, to, be, uh, to, be, to be read and displayed. So we are doing the same thing here. So we also have to make sure that we strip what's on the right of this, um, of whatever we read over here from the file. And what, what, what we are trying to re, uh, strip is basically the new line character. Same. All right, so we know also that when we try to read the score, okay, the test score, it also has a new line character attached to it, okay? It's fine. We, we, it's fine. We can have it as a string, all right? It's fine when we, are, we know it's stored in the file as a string. When we are reading it, we are not going to use it for calculations yet. We are just going to display it. So it's fine to have it as a string. But it also has a new line character attached to the end of it. So we need to also strip when, when we try to read the line, okay, that contains, let's say, the scores and storage and player score. 
Glasgow basically has that number, that four to five, plus an Elan character at the end of it. But we need to strip it from it. Anytime you read something from a file, a number from a file, you are reading it as a string. In this case, there's a there's a new line attached to it. So we can R strip, we can strip what's on the right of that too. And that's going to be the new line character. We are stripping the new line character on the right of a player score. And then we are done. So let's run this again and we can see that it's working. Right. If you want to see it in action why it worked, let's remove, okay, let's remove first of all the R strip from the from the um, from the player score and remove the R strip from this last um, player name here. And let's do it one by one. Let's just leave this first one and see how it works. Or first of all, let, let's take it back to how it was displaying. Okay, we we take out all the R strips, run the program. This is how it was displaying. Okay, there's a new line character attached to this name when we call it the first time. So let's strip it. I'm going to R strip just so you can see how it works. I'm going to R strip the new line character at the end of this line. That is causing it to be, to that's causing whatever is, uh, whatever is following this to be displayed on the next line. I'm going to strip it from there. So when I run this program, we can see that that has been taken care of. But the, this, th these scores also have a new line character at the end of them. That is, that's why it's causing whatever is displaying the scores to be displayed on the next line going. And that is the score here. I'm going to R strip, strip on the right of that score the new line character backslash n run it and we can see that that is also taken care of the scores now have uh, now no, no no longer have that new line character that's forcing whatever it is whatever is following them to be displayed on the next line so now because it has no new line character everything is displaying right after okay it's not on the next line now you know the the you know so this is so this is basically um one line over here um so the so this has been taken care of the, the score has been taken care of the very first name that we read over here has been taken care of the subsequent uh, the, the subsequent names which is what basically the name that we try to read in the loop if there are names in the file if there are names in the file okay so if there are names in the file though this this while loop, this um read line over here in the while loop is going to try to get them this is just for the first name and that's why that has been taken care of we have stripped the new line we have stripped the new line from the score and so this is fine these are the um names that are tried uh, fetched in the while loop okay if there are if there are continuous um names in the file and so anytime it's fetching that name there's a new line correct at the end of them so we need to also strip them so that are strip i just wanted you to see them that's why uh, to see them in action, so I'm going to strip the backslash n from them from from them too, and then run the program and it's fixed it. So it says K scored 45 points, Kakra scored 67 points, John scored 32 points. So this is a nice way to actually display them. In the file, they are stored as records. Okay, so this is one record, and these are individual fields, right? So this is one record of K. K K's name the name is K score of 45. That's the record of Kakra. His name is Kakra, score is 67, and that's the record of John. Name is John, and score is 32. And each of them, okay, is a, is a field. Each of these values, okay, um, is, a, is a field. And so you can display them this way, just to um, and just to make sense of them, right? Because if they're stored in a file like this, you may not know what it means. And so basically, we're done. We're done. But let's go ahead. You can add exception handling, right? That was... Um, chapter six basically but we're not going to add exception handling here we i think we added it we added it in every almost every program in chapter six almost all nine nine ten well this is the tenth one so almost all nine programs let's 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 just paste this question the question here too we had exception handling in almost all of them so you can refer from them and add exception handling yeah, if you want but this is just to solve the question. All right, so for the most part, we are done. I save this. Let's basically run this program again and then change the scores. Change the scores. So please type in a name for and a player name. I'm going to type in um, Isabella. And it says, please type in the score for, of Isabella, right? Or for Isabella. 
I'm going to type in 67, hit enter. Do you want another, um, do you want to, I meant, do you want to add? Okay, it's fine. Do you want to add another record? I'm going to type in uppercase Y, it's the same thing. That will also work, hit yes. And it says, please type in another name. I'm going to type in Matthew. Please type in the score of Matthew. I'm going to type in 56, hit enter. Do you want to add an, another name? I'm going to type in lowercase Y. It should work, right? Because we said if another entry is lowercase Y or another entry is uppercase Y. So I'm going to hit lowercase y, hit enter. Please type in the play, um, play name. I'm going to say um, K, hit enter. Please type in the score for K. I'm going to type in 51, hit enter. Do you want to type another character? I'm going to do one more time for the fourth player and say um, Moses. <laughs> and then hit enter. Um, whoops, so over here it was asking me, do you want to add another record? I said type Y for yes and any other character for no. So when I type in Moses, okay, that wasn't a, a lowercase Y or, or an uppercase Y, so it saw it to be a no. So that's why it, it said all the files have been printed. So it just printed three files. Let's go check the file to see if it has changed. Um, no, I need to close the file. This is the old one. So I close it and I open it again. All right, and now we can see the new ones. I, I had the open the old one open, so now we can see the new file. Yeah, it has updated. Isabella, Matthew, Matthew and um, K. When I go to the the golf data read program and I hit run, it says Isabella scored sixty seven points, Matthew scored fifty six, and K scored fifty one. And so it's reading from the it's writes into the file properly and it's reading from the file properly. Okay. All right, so we're done. Okay, so if you have any questions, again, I know it was a bit rough because, I, I, you know, I haven't been doing these programs. I just started yesterday. Um, I just, I continued yesterday. Again, I traveled and I was doing some other things. But I'm back and I'll be keeping the videos coming and, you know, do a, a bunch of other things in other languages as well. And I'll finish all the programming challenges. So it was a bit rough, but I'm getting, I'm getting back in form. <laughs> so I should be um, sharp. Um, not, you know, not like perfect, but... I should be informed soon. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below. As always, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. And that's going to be the first program in Chapter 7, which is list and, and tuples. All right. Okay, take care. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. Have a nice time. Um, have a nice sleep. <laughs> I miss saying these things. Um, anyway. <laughs> And I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then. Bye-bye.